Hello, this is Dr. Whiting, and today I want to revisit a subject that apparently is becoming uh, more and more of an epidemic with each passing year, and that is thyroid issue. And we're more specifically talking about an underactive thyroid or a hypothyroid condition, where the thyroid is unable uh, or unwilling to produce adequate thyroid hormone. Recently, this condition and the volume of epidemic it has become was reported on the Dr. Oz show. And Dr. Oz talked about the epidemic of an underactive thyroid condition. And he urged people to have their thyroid checked. And he urged folks to deal with this problem if they have it. He discussed many of the symptoms of underactive thyroid. And I am very happy that he chose to address this because he is in a position to reach many millions of people, and that's important. What I want to talk to you about today is why. Why, why is it that all of a sudden we have this epidemic of thyroid issues? I mean, underactive thyroid's been around for a long time. And in the old days, when was the old days? Oh, 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, it was due to an iodine deficiency. Because people didn't eat seafood, iodine was no longer available elementally in uh, grains, fruits, and vegetables because it had been depleted from the soils. And we had people all over the country, especially women, developing huge nodules under their chin uh, called goiter. And goiter is a, 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 a chronic, a, acute, but can be chronic, um, issue with the thyroid gland. And iodine supplementation not only prevented that, but actually reversed it in many cases. Today, it's not as simple as that. Uh, most salt products that you buy are iodized. In other words, iodine has been added. Um, if you take a good multiple vitamin mineral supplement, a good one, it should also contain iodine, which is an essential mineral. So what are the issues today? Well, certainly nutrient deficiencies still apply. But there are other issues that have reared their ugly heads. First of all, chemicals in our environment. You see, the thyroid gland, like many other glandular systems within the body, is highly susceptible to toxins. And we have more toxins, more toxic substances in our environment today than our grandparents were exposed to in their entire life. So in one day, we get more exposure to a greater variety of toxic synthetic chemicals than our grandparents experienced in their whole life. Now, each and every one of those toxic substances has to be what we call denatured or broken down into harmless substances so they can be excreted from the body safely. The primary organ that is responsible for that is your liver. Your liver is the chemical laboratory. And when the liver uh, becomes congested because of too many toxins, uh, becomes sluggish because of poor nutrition and poor diet, it begins to become less and less effective at breaking these toxins down. Further, the vast majority of the toxic chemicals and synthetic substances in our environment, in the air, the food, the water, didn't exist 20 years ago. Which means that these newfound chemical compounds are so strange to the liver that oftentimes it has no idea how to break these substances down. And as these toxins rise in the body, it can affect a variety of organs and glands, depending upon what your genetic weaknesses might be. So let's say you are predisposed to a thyroid problem, don't have one, but genetically you might be predisposed. As the body's internal chemistry spins out of balance. Whatever is your genetic or hereditary weak spot is going to be affected first and most aggressively. 
and in that case it could possibly be your thyroid gland. What about fluoride? Now fluoride is a mineral. It has been established as having some nutritional value in its organic form. However, heavy metal fluoride um, is very toxic substance. Fluoride is added to drinking water in many communities under the disguise, I suppose, for lack of a better word, of pre preventing tooth decay. Uh, when dentists give you a fluoride treatment, they're doing so to prevent further tooth decay. And it works, as long as you rinse and spit. But when you put fluoride in the drinking water and people cook with it and drink with it and bathe with it, you can raise the soft tissue levels of fluoride excessively high. We know there is a direct correlation between excess fluoride toxicity and failure of the thyroid gland's ability to function. If you are living in an area that is serviced by water that has been fluoridated, please consider filtering it out. Contact a good water filter company and find a filter, especially for your drinking water, that will remove heavy metal fluoride. If you have an existing thyroid condition, this is absolutely essential because the more fluoride you consume, the worse your thyroid function will become. Stress. We have talked about stress on these uh, uh, videos in this forum for a long, long time. Uh, as many of you know, I believe that stress is the cardinal cause of all illness. And uh, there's no doubt that more people are under greater stress today than in many, many years past. Uh, due to the economic problems uh, uh, and various other issues uh, socially, um, stress is continuing to mount in many, many people's lives. When you have excess stress, which is the stress you feel you cannot manage, um, then you have an issue um, that it can adversely affect various living systems of the body. And again, wherever you are, you have your greatest weakness, genetically or, or hereditarily, um, that's going to be the area that's going to be adversely affected first. So if you have a tendency towards thyroid problems, uh, because they run in your family, for example, uh, excess stress can oftentimes uh, increase the risk of thyroid malfunction. Side effects for many drugs. There are lots of drugs in use today that are very harsh on the thyroid gland. And then, of course, radiation exposure. Um, it is, there's no doubt that we are exposed to more radiation today uh, than in many, many years past. Uh, the ozone layer is being depleted, which means that there's more radiation reaching the earth uh, from the sun. And if you are fair-skinned, that can be a potential problem. We also have radiation from x-rays. We have radiation from cell phones. And some people hang on those things glued to their ear uh, for hours a day. Um, and then we have people who travel, like me. We have people who have to occasionally go through those radiation scanners. And I have spoken with the uh, TSA agents, and none of them can tell me how much radiation we're being exposed to. And you might be interested to know that those uh, radiation scanners are voluntary, at least at this point. And the reason for that is, is because they don't know the long-term side effects of repeated exposure. Now I suppose if you travel once a year on vacation you probably don't have to worry about glowing in the dark. But if you're a businessman or an educator like me, I'm going through an airport uh, security five, six times a month. And um, I frequently uh, think about that and wonder just how much radiation is too much. These are some of the reasons why I believe that thyroid problems, specifically hypo or low thyroid, um, these conditions are on the rise. And I think that Dr. Oz did a great service by making people aware of this epidemic 